Okay. Right. So let us maybe start with a prayer. Well, God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your engagement in history with um, humanity. We thank you for the record we have of this in the pages of scripture. And we thank you especially that you are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And as we reflect on this, uh, we pray that you'll speak into our lives and into our situations, that this will be an encouragement to us. This will strengthen our hope that we have in you and that it would also be an invitation to walk more closely with you and get to know you better. And so, Lord, we lift this time to you and pray that you would work through it and work in us and glorify your name. This we ask for your glory. Amen. Right. Um, one of the problems we, we face in uh, dealing with scripture is that we're living in a very, very different world. Um, we have the, uh, the Bible written and people were living in agricultural societies. There was no technology. Uh, life expectancy was much less. Uh, disease was far more of a threat. Except <laughs> last year, that's changed somewhat in, in our ex experience. Um, but it's a uh, and so almost as, as we read scripture, we look back and we, we have a sense this is a little bit removed from us. And therefore, what we read of in the pages of scripture, it's very tempting to be able to think, oh, well, that was rather nice for back then. Um, but me today in my complex life with the issues that I'm facing and living with, um, that doesn't really apply because our world is different. And what we realize as we read through scripture is that absolutely our world is different, but the God we, we, we follow has not changed at all. He is the same as the scripture says, yesterday, today, and forever. Um, he doesn't change. And that, as with so much of what happens when, we, when we're trying to get our head around God and understand God and think about God, becomes a challenge to us because we so much of of our understanding is based on um, our own experience, our our life in this universe, in this space time continuum, um, shapes how we understand everything. Um, and therefore, as we're trying to uh, understand God, we we come up time and again against the limitations that our existence imposes upon us. And so to talk about God as existing outside of time, what, what does existence outside of time look like? How does that work? Um, because our in existence is moving along linear time that we began yesterday, we're living through today, we're heading into tomorrow, and we only go along time in one direction. Um, and that, in a sense, time is, is a two-dimensional experience. You, you have yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You don't have a, a three-dimensional experience of time where you're moving this way, but what about if you move up in time? What, what happens there? Um, so uh, those kind of ideas we stumble with. And so when we think of God creating the universe, um, he has to be outside of time because Time is part of the universe. And that um, science has, has um, shown us that time is, is, is an integral part of, of our universe. And so before the universe was, um, there was no time. So it's, it's not as though God existed in time and at a certain point in time created the universe and the universe has been going since then. Um, because when God created the universe, that was when time started. And so... Um, this God that is outside of time, looking in on time, seeing all of time uh, in his view. He, he knows the end from the beginning. And there are all these, these verses which talk about that. We can't, we can't relate to that. Um, but that is the God that, that we worship. Um, we change because today is different to yesterday. Um, and our experience changes. Um, but if you think if we were to be able to pause time for an instant, 
while time was paused like that, there would be no change because time wouldn't be moving. And so with God living outside of time, it is perfectly logical that he doesn't change. Um, so we have this unchanging God. And as we read through the scripture, this comes out time and again, uh, that uh, God says to us, um, the whole world will change. The, everything's going to wear out and be wrapped up, but God doesn't change. God is the same yesterday and today and forever. Um, he says, uh, uh, where is it? In Psalm 8, 90, before the mountains were born or you brought forth the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. And, and time and again in scripture, we have this, this view that God gives of himself unchanging, that he is the same at all times. So God's life doesn't change is the first point that they make. Um, God is the same yesterday, today. And forever, let me just quickly. Created things have a beginning and an ending, but not so their creator. Um, God has no end, no beginning. He is the same, unchanging always. Um, and therefore, as uh, Pink said, you, God doesn't change for the better. There's no improvement because he's already perfect. Um, and because he's perfect, he can't change for the worse because that would make him imperfect. And so even God's um, attributes demand an unchangeableness to them. So uh, as Packer works through it, he says there that God's life does not change. He then says God's character does not change. Um, that uh, he reveals himself to Abraham as I am who I am. Just, uh, I exist, I am. And then in Exodus, uh, uh, we're told that, that God comes down in a cloud and stood with um, uh, Moses and proclaimed the name of the Lord. He passed in front of Moses proclaiming the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate the gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation. And it's almost as though the first where God says, I am, uh, he's revealing that he is. And in the second encounter with Moses, as he describes his character, is revealing what he is, the kind of God that he is, that he is gracious and compassionate, that he is slow to anger, um, that he is abounding in love. That is the God. And this is a God that doesn't change. It's not that he was that at that moment. He is that always. The third point that, that Packer makes is that God's truth does not change. Um, our words and what we say does change simply because times change, uh, things move on. Our understanding of things changes. Sometimes we will uh, get involved in something or say something because of a limited understanding. As we grow and we discover more, our understanding um, uh, and perception will change and therefore what we say will change as well. Um, God doesn't have that as a problem because he knows all things perfectly. Um, Packer says the following, uh, nothing of the sort happens to the creator. He never becomes less truthful or merciful or just or good than he used to be. The character of God is today and always will be exactly what it was in Bible times. So because our times are changing and our understanding changes, we change. Um, God doesn't have that problem. God's ways, thirdly, says Packer, do not change. He continues to act towards people in the same way that he has all along. And, and he makes the, the point where he talks about the, uh, his ways not changing. 
he says um, that he continues to act towards sinful men and women in the way that he does in the Bible story. Um, he shows his freedom and lordship by discriminating between sinners, causing some to hear the gospel whilst others do not, moving some who hear it to repentance while leaving others in their unbelief and showing in doing this that he owes mercy to no one. And it is entirely through grace that some find life. Um, and reading that, it might be a, a bit of a challenge that uh, there is this, that some per people receive mercy, some don't. We need to remember that no one deserves mercy. Um, uh, human beings deserve every single one of us um, we, we have separated ourselves from God. We have cut ourselves off from God. We've walked our own way and we've shunned him. Um, and the fact that he, in some instances, breaks through to people and gets them to turn is entirely grace um, and done entirely in uh, God's freedom to act as he wishes. Um, and so the way God works with people, does not change. His purposes do not change either. 1 Samuel 15, 29 says, He who is the glory of Israel does not lie or change his mind, for he is not a man that he should change his mind. What God purposes, what he has in mind to do, that he does. Um, and... Uh, there's a quote from Packer where he says, uh, God doesn't need to revise his judgment or change his plan of actions. His plans are made on the basis of a complete knowledge and control, which extends to all things, present, past, and future, so that there are no sudden emergencies or unlooked for developments to take him by surprise. Um, there's nothing that would force God to rethink anything. Um, and where it appears that God's direction changes or that things are, are happening differently, uh, as we look into it more deeply, we suddenly realize that's been God's intention all along. And as I said in the sermon, there's sometimes an idea that some people would propagate and say that almost that God created people and they sinned and then he had to make another plan so he came up with the laws and that didn't work. And so he came up with another plan and he sent Jesus. Um, but that's not what happened at all. This is all part of God knew exactly what would happen and that all formed part of his plan. And so that uh, John says that from the creation of the world, uh, Jesus was the word and was intended to come. Um, and uh, there's passages where it talks about uh, God calling us from before the creation of the world. So this was always part of his plan. And as things evolved and as things happened, um, it might appear from our perspective that things are changing. But from God's perspective, it all is working exactly as he intended and his purposes continue going. Um, and then there's those, those one or two passages in the scripture where it talks about God repenting or changing his mind. Um, and as Packer pointed out, and I mentioned in the sermon, in all of those instances, it's uh, people's reaction um, leads them to a point where God will deal with them in a way that he wasn't dealing with them beforehand. And so um, with Jonah and the Ninevites, uh, God brings judgment on them and threatens them with judgment um, because that's what their action, that's what their life, that's what they're doing, that's what they deserve. Um, and so when the Ninevites repent um, and stop doing what they're doing, God therefore treats them differently because they have changed. Um, and it might appear that, oh, God said he was going to judge the Ninevites and now he didn't. And that is exactly what Jonah says. And if you read through the book of Jonah, he sits outside of, of the city and he laments the fact that God hasn't destroyed these horrible people, the enemies of the people of Israel. And he wishes God would destroy them. And he says, I knew you'd do this, God, that you, you're a gracious and compassionate God. Um, uh, 
And so from Jonah's perspective, it's also that, as though God has changed his mind. But from God's perspective, uh, that was an intention. He is saving his people. That's why Jonah had to go and preach to them. And so it might look as though, and the, the language might be God changed his mind. Um, but the rest of scripture, it all puts, puts it together in a way that it, that was always God's intention. And then finally, as God works um, and doesn't change, his son remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus um, doesn't change. Um, and all those stories we read in the scripture of how Jesus dealt with people, the Jesus we pray to um, and the Jesus that has promised, I will be with you, it is that, that same Jesus that is with us, um, and that is therefore an encouragement to us um, that this gracious, compassionate, loving, selfless uh, uh, God-man is the same person we interact with. And therefore, um, this, if one follows a number of, of uh, preachers, and I've heard people speaking, where they tend to uh, bring God into our human experience and limit God in the same way that we are limited. Um, and I've heard sermons which suggest that God is changing um, and that the God we read about in the Old Testament is different from the God that we're worshipping today. Um, and that is completely untrue. That is, is not what scripture teaches. Um, and the minute you, you start something like that, if you push that further and say, well, what are the implications of a position where God has, is different to date from what he was yesterday? How do we know that God's going to be loving tomorrow? How do we know that God's not suddenly going to give up on humanity and say, that's it, done with you, um, and I'm going to bring another flood and destroy everybody? Um, uh, we know that he's not going to do that because it doesn't change. Um, our experience might, might change. Our perception and the way humans live, um, we have changed. God hasn't. And so therefore we have this confidence in him. And I think the, bringing it into a personal perspective, because God is unchanging in, in, in this way, um, as we read through scripture, what we see of, of God's dealings with people in the Bible, there is no reason that, we, that God will not deal with us in the same way. Um, it's not that, that God was particularly close to, to David um, and called him and made him king, uh, but we're sort of two or three uh, paces removed from God. Um, we're not. Um, and if we do not experience God in the same way that someone like David did, it's because of what we're doing <laughs> and we're the problem. It's not God. Um, and for me, that, that, that's, a, that's a challenge, to, that we can walk more closely with God. We can be uh, more deeply connected with God. We can be more used by God um, because God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And the, the God who, who worked with somebody like Abram and called Abram is the same God that, that engages with us. Um, and the same God that... Uh, called somebody like Barnabas and used him to assist Paul in his ministry is the same God that we're following. Um, and uh, going back to David, uh, here is a man that was uh, uh, a man after God's own heart, and yet he got things so wrong so often, um, but he repented and came back to God, and that didn't stop God from from. Uh, referring to him as a man after my own heart. And, and when our humanity breaks into our relationship and sours things and gets us to do things wrong, uh, 
the same God that dealt with David with compassion and challenged him um, and held him accountable for what he'd done, but drew him back to himself. The same God deals with us. And so that is an encouragement and a challenge as we follow God day by day. So a brief overview of chapter 7 of Packer's book and a looking a look at an unchanging God. Are there any questions that come up or things that aren't clear or things that people would um, want more explanation or say, yes, but what about? Um, if there is, just unmute yourself and ask. And we will, not guaranteeing I'll answer the question, um, uh, but we'll give a, <laughs> we will see because there are some things which one ends up puzzling over. So, any questions? Okay. Um, in that case, I'm going to, to, in two minutes' time, ask Wendy to break us up into groups. Um, and the, the three questions I would like you to discuss in the group. Now, we, we're not going to have a group leader officially uh, holding people, giving people a uh, chance to speak. Uh, so we're going to ask people to manage, that each one of us manages ourselves in the group. Um, and we answer the questions and we listen to one another and we make enough time for other people to participate as well. Um, because with three questions, if there's um, six or seven people in the group um, and we each take one minute to answer the question, it'll take us 20, 25 minutes to work through the group discussion. So the three questions uh, taking this, this discussion about God unchanging. The first is um, our personal response. Um, when we compare the relationship experience that Abraham, Jacob, Moses, and David had with God and compare that to our own experience with God, what differences are there? Um, and that'll be for each one of us, there'll be different differences. So it's the thinking, we read the Bible and how people related to God, how are we different? And what are some of the issues that would make the, those differences? So it's our personal engagement with God. The second question is, um, a slightly more uh, general one, do we think or, or in what way might God be using the present situation to draw us back to God? This situation of COVID, where we are in the world, um, we say God is unchanging, he's in control. What do we think God's doing at this time? Uh, and then the third question is, what is your greatest concern and what is your assurance from the notion that God doesn't change or the, the discovery that God doesn't change? So it's firstly how our relationship is different. Um, secondly, what's God doing? And thirdly, um, what is our um, uh, what, what concerns us or what encourages us? in the notion of an unchanging God. No. Right. Um, we're going to end off. I, um, as, as so often happens, sort of, a question came up in our group, and just as the question was posed, uh, one of those questions that, that is going to provide, have a 20-minute a, a engagement the, the note just came up that the groups are going to end. <laughs> so um, yeah, we hope that didn't happen to too many other groups. We also hope that the, your discussions, um, again, in group discussions, there's no right or wrong answer. There's no uh, way that you have to discuss everything. It really is just an, an opportunity with a couple of other people to, to share ideas and to share what we're thinking. Um, and... Uh, we don't have to agree with what everybody says um, because sometimes people can say things that we'll disagree with or that won't make sense to us. But all of that sharing provokes our thinking. Um, 
forces us back to to scripture because ultimately if what we understand about God we've got to derive from scripture because that's the only thing that that, that, that is a, a stable um, basis um, and I trust that the the group discussions were were good encouraging and helpful um, if if there are any issues that that came up in the groups uh, that you think this is something that we have to uh, deal with send it to me on an email and we'll see how we can manage the process going forward with a, a general email to people would would be an answer or um, how we can manage it also if you have thoughts about how we manage the process for the bible studies um, because uh, we certainly haven't thought of everything and i know that there are uh, a lot of people that have been involved in similar things at work and in other uh, fora where they've done group work and and that and so if you've come have seen other people doing something which worked really well um, and can make a suggestion do let us know and we can uh, adapt what we're doing to accommodate that um, and then we will no doubt have some people unable to join us for some of the weeks and other people joining us as well. And that's absolutely fine. We look forward to people being with us as and when they are able to. So let us close with a prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are unchanging. Um, and as we go through life, and as we confront change in every area of life, as we confront change in ourselves, as we grow and mature and age, as we try to live in a world where tomorrow might be quite different from today, we thank you that in all the uncertainties and insecurities of this changeable and, and often unpredictable world, we thank you that you are unchanging and we can trust you, we can rely on you, we can stand on you and know that in you we have a hope, we have guidance, we have a direction which will stand us in good stead going forward. And so, Lord, we pray that you'll go with us into this evening, into the last bit, second half of the week, and into the weekend. Jesus, we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.